Hi, everyone. My name is Mary Beth Walsh. I am the Director of Children and Youth Programs with NAMI Virginia. And we are here today to talk about the topic of transition, which is, of course, just a fancy way of saying change. Uh, before, but we, before we get into our conversation, I do want to introduce um, the other individuals who will be discussing this topic with me. The first is Wade Rosado. And Wade, if you want to go ahead and give a quick introduction. Hi, I'm Wade Rosado, as previously mentioned. I'm a peer support specialist. Uh, I'm 22, and that age is the majority of my qualification for being here. <laughs> Extremely qualified in this case. <laughs> Uh, next up, we'll have Becky Sylvie. Hi, I'm Becky Sylvie. I am a mother to three, grandma to one. I am a parent resource coordinator, and I sit on the Virginia Family Network um, board with uh, NAMI Virginia. Great, thank you. So for those of you who might not be familiar with uh, NAMI Virginia our organization. NAMI stands for the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Um, and we have three levels. We have a state, we have local chapters, and we have a national organization. And our mission is to promote recovery and quality of life of Virginians living with serious mental illness. Uh, we also, like Becky said, house the Virginia Family Network which is of course done through wonderful support by the Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Services. And this network is a way to connect families and parents of children with mental health needs with each other. And so that they can, um, other parents can empower and support um, the, their peers across the state um, with navigating the system and other needs that might be occurring. So when we were asked by the I'm Determined conference to speak today, they really wanted us to talk about the transitional period and some of the things that can come up with, you know, re related to mental health um, around that. Because as we all know, even if you're not a person who um, is living with a, a disability or um, a mental health challenge, transition is hard. Transition can be hard for, for anyone. Um, and so when you add in uh, certain levels that um, maybe are, are heightened during that time, it can be both exciting, but also a little bit um, anxiety inducing. And so, and again, all normal feelings. We all, we all experience this sometimes with change. And so we thought it'd be really important for this video so that we're not just talking at you because <laughs> everyone kind of knows how that feels um, to bring in some other perspectives about navigating that time period because sometimes the best resource is having somebody who's lived the, who's lived that experience and can be a guiding light through the journey. Um, so I have some questions that we're gonna kind of jump into and I'm gonna ask our lovely guest today. And then at the end of this presentation, there will be a PowerPoint slide offered with some resources to help you get started on navigating a transition and navigating through potential stressors such as anxiety um, to help not only yourselves, but uh, your, your youth, your young adult, your child. Um, Okie dokie. So I'll, I'll ask the first question then um, so I can pull it up. But the first question to both Wade and Becky is, if you could go back and tell yourself one thing while going through the transitional period, what would it be? Um, and I'm gonna start with Wade, if you wanna go ahead, and you can also give some background about how you were, what you were experiencing too during that time, if that's okay. Sure, um, the period of transition that I'm gonna be talking about is specifically the transition out of high school and into kind of a more adult life, um, which for me was an incredibly difficult period of time. Um, I didn't have a lot of support or access to a lot of the phenomenal resources that I've since learned about. Um, and if I could go back to, you know, like when I first graduated, just like everyone uh, in any uh, situation, there's so much that I would want to say, but I think the most important thing is that it doesn't need to be perfect to be worth doing. Mm -hmm. It just needs to be better. Um, and if, if that's something that I could both go back and tell myself 
and make the terrible moody teenager that I used to be actually listen to, that would be phenomenal. <laughs> I'm sure you weren't that moody. Oh, no, no. <laughs> we were I was. all there at one point. It was bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Becky, so if you could go back, and again, you can explain. I know you've had a lot, have different experiences. Um, so if you want to talk about one child or multiple, it's up to you. Um, but if you could go back and talk to yourself and tell yourself one thing, what would it be? Plan early. Uh, it's never too early to start planning, especially for these big transitions. Uh, for my, we'll talk about the middle son, uh, Nick. Uh, learned the earlier you start planning, the better those transitions are going to be. Are you going to make a few mistakes? You bet. But you learn from those mistakes. Uh, the Some of the best things that we have learned along the way. Um, it's okay to let him fail sometimes because that's how you learn. Uh, I wasn't one of those mothers that wanted to rush in and fix everything. He needed to learn how to adult himself and when there was a struggle, overcome it. Find a plan, work the plan, make it happen. But setting goals for those transitions, whether they're little bitty goals that you got to get out of the bed this morning and make it to the shower, or you've got to get out of the bed and make it to school on time. Uh, all of those are important. Uh, his big challenge right now is going from a local community college that he earned his associate's degree in uh, to a big school out of state that we hope is going to accept students in August. If not, they'll start online. And that's the transition we're working on right now. Um, right now, we don't know if he's going to move out there in August or if he's going to stay here and have to do it online until um, the nation's situation changes. But mm -hmm. plan early mm -hmm. and expect some failures along the way. It's okay. You learn from those. Mm -hmm. You bring up a good point, and I'm going to throw in a question that I did not write down because I like to keep people on their toes. But um, Becky, you mentioned the transition um, with Nick into from live, being at home and going to getting his associate's degree nearby to then moving out of state. But to that, to, so he was focusing on that transition, but then he got an additional kind of challenge thrown in of like not even knowing if that's going to happen. Have you noticed any um, any 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 things? Um, like stressors or things that w that he has had before with transitions or anything new with this transition that's hard to plan for that you would have advice about? You know, we, we knew that he would need some things uh, for his room. Uh, and he's like, do we go on and buy those or do we wait? What do we do? He's like, I, with the shortages of everything, he says, I don't want to wait till the last minute. And... You know, so I've tried to tell him, well, eventually it's going to be, it's going to, you're going to need certain things. Um, the ref small refrigerator, a small microwave. Uh, the biggest challenge right now is him deciding whether he's going to take his bed here at home or try and sleep in a dorm bed that he's not going to like. You know, he's a six foot tall guy. He's, he's big <laughs> and he's used to his bed. And we found out that if they don't, if they say, no, you can't have your bed from home, we found that we can get a doctor's note explaining why. So those are some things, you know, we've started thinking about, you know, I don't want him to get there and be uncomfortable. I may have to ha drive halfway across the country to get a bed and go back. So thinking about those things, uh, what do we need to do now? Um, we're in the process of making sure and all of it, the vaccines that he needs to go to college are in place, uh, not wait until the last minute for that. Mm -hmm. So those, you know, just little things like that. Um, is he gonna have a checking account out there or just stick with what he has here? Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of like, you know, we still have to plan mm -hmm. in a way, but it's planning with the expectation of- It might not happen. Exactly, he yes. Might be he may be forced to do distance learning. Mm -hmm. 
And I always find that, um, and wait, I'm going to ask you the same question in a minute about planning, but um, I always find that uh, with planning and, and not, and not, and then having it change can be one of the hardest transitions as you put a lot of thought and effort into something and then it doesn't come, come out. And again, that can make anyone feel stressed and anxious and lead to other other issues down the road if it not not addressed at that time but i think being able to plan and have conversations throughout that planning process of being like we're going to plan because it's still important that we we look to the future um but at the same time understanding that we're in a weird time that it might change things up but hey at least you already have these things set we know how we would address them anyways so it's actually a good thing that we're doing this because we are getting the feel for it now um even if it's you know, delayed a couple of months in a way. Um, so Wade, planning, did planning help you? Um, how, like, how, what made you feel a little less um, anxious, I guess, or we'll go back to the, we'll go back to the, the question originally I asked Becky, which is like, you know, what is something to look out for? <laughs> in a, Over planning. Uh, uh, if you are a person who uh, deals with uh, anxiety or anything along those lines, it's very easy to start catastrophizing and planning not only for what you want to do, but for every way that that might go wrong. And that can very quickly get unhelpful and unhealthy. Uh, making a plan that is workable, that's actionable, that's actually something that you can physically as a human person do in an amount of time is hugely important. And when you find yourself working on a backup plan for every letter of the alphabet, just in case something goes wrong, that is when the energy that you're spending to try to prepare yourself is really actually just kind of keeping you where you already are and preventing you from kind of really enacting any of that meaningful change that you're trying to plan for. Mm -hmm. So true. Plan, plan, plan. I think that was something that we sat in a transition age youth panel and, and Wade did. And that was the big takeaway from the majority of panelists was the planning. You know, it doesn't, like he said, you don't have to make 20 plans, <laughs> but stick to the one and kind of go from there. Um, so is there, uh, Wade, we'll start with you then. Is there a lesson learned um, from, you know, your experience that you want parents or caregivers to know? Absolutely. Um, and you actually demonstrated it rather excellently when we started off this recording. Don't talk at anyone. Child, youth, young adult, elderly, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't communicate anything really because you're not speaking to be heard you're speaking to just to do it mm -hmm. um taking into account the fact that there is another person who's listening to you who has to understand what you're telling them is hugely important but also keeping in mind that they might have their own thoughts or opinions or plans or information that contradicts the information that you have that you're speaking to always be willing and open to have it be a conversation whether you're a parent whether you're a caregiver anything just be conscientious of the fact that whoever you're speaking to is a person and be willing to have a conversation rather than lecture or instruct. Mm -hmm. It's a great um, advice. Becky, what about you? Any lessons learned you would like other parents to know? We have our children and they grow up and you have to be willing to cut the cord and let them fly. Uh, you know, with my children's challenges, they're going to grow up regardless. And the best thing I can do is show them and give them tools to use to be able to manage their own lives um, and be willing to let them go halfway across the country to go to school. Um, you know, you just got to be willing to let them be adults 
Mm -hmm. but you've got to set the example for them and help them along the way. Mm 